Say to his face, even. The boy went who was no better than a bummer. So what's he now, the gangster? All right, gangster. all right. Not whatever, whatever, all right? Anyway, LaPlante, he's broke. So he goes up to Park Avenue and starts hanging on the streetcar stuff. And you know what he's doing? Collecting streetcar transfers off the street and selling them. Nerve? Nerve. At three cents a piece, he's got about a quarter in two hours. And he walks right in that door, LaPlante, and sits in on the room again. You win? <laughs> He runs it up to about 10 bucks in no time at all. Now, you know what he does next? Hi, Pop. Ah, look at the little soldier. <laughs> you know my kid, don't you? Is this Lenny? No. Lenny. Lenny's 22. He's going to be a doctor. He says scholarships all through school. This is dirty. He's a dope like me. Oh, <laughs> Come right, on. Get some supper. Hey, Mo. Hi, Dirty. Hi, Sally. Give me a special, uh, please. Well, well, right, it? Dirty. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Huh? Now, uh, so, the boy wanted takes the $10 and places it on a horse running at Belmont. Now the horse comes in and pays 11 to 1. Now he goes looking for a barbotte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now picture him, LaPlante, a 29-year-old boy who hasn't even made his name yet. Yeah, all night he spends gambling with those lowlifes. Gangsters, anti-Semites alike. I mean, if he loses, all right. But if he wins, are they going to let that little St. Urban Street you walk off with all that money? Now just imagine, LaPlante, it's dawn. The city is awakening. In the Jewish General Hospital, let's say a, a baby is being born. In the Catholic Hospital, now, no offense to play. Some poor, misbeguided nun has just died of an abortion. The boy wonder steps out into God's sunlight, and in his pocket, it's close to $1,000. Dirty. Now, mortals like you and I go home and get some sleep. The boy wonder catches the first train to Baltimore. And you know, that's a tough horse town. I mean, for six weeks, we don't hear from him. Expect the worst, I said to myself. And one day, who should come into town but Jerry Dingleman, the boy wonder? Only this time, he's driving a car a block long. And sitting beside him is the greatest little piece you ever saw. I mean, knockers? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what else? He's got his own stable now. No, I swear. He's got eight horses running at Baltimore. Yeah. And from what? From what, LaPlante? Streetcar transfers at three cents a piece. Now, can you beat that? <laughs> <laughs> what? You can't go there. I don't go. 
go. I can't got to come back empty. Nah. I can't it's make just... a pickup for the hostage. Here you are, Sam. It'll cost me a fortune. The cops get me. It's going to cost me right, plenty. Sam, uh, I can't make a pickup for the hostage. It's crazy. So they got to to me after that. Fuck you. I want to go to Hudson. What? Because you can't go there. I don't go She's there. got a sign in her bra. And you know what it says? It says, watch out for the four-foot drop. <laughs> Daddy, you're gonna have to go home by yourself. I, uh, I gotta take Josette someplace. Why can't Dabrowski take Josette? Because it's gotta be me. Now, will you do as I ask, please? Oh, jeez. He gets it off the top. What are you, crazy? Hey! You're pimping for her! Barge in like that when I'm studying. Oh, yeah, I know. Anatomy's the big killer. Oh, hey, 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 hey. I got a job as a waiter up north this summer. You don't have to worry about your, uh, your fees for school next year. You can have all my tips. Great. Oh, I know. Don't tell me. Uncle Ben, he's gonna pay all my fees. Get out of here. All right, all right. You got any matches? Throw the matches. See that old geezer, the one in the corner? He's been stealing bolts of cloth. I saw him. Joey, find one. In all my years in the trade, I never hired anybody to spy on the workers here. Why not? You afraid you're gonna find even more of them stealing? You know, with all your loans and helping them set up a union, they still think you're a Jew and a capitalist, like. Ooh, 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 some kid you are. Not like Lenny, eh? I hear you're selling underwear to the girls you get from a mail order house. Uh, how did you make all your money, Uncle Benji? What am I gonna do with you? Why don't you fire me? I won't fire you. It would hurt your grandfather. Never had any spies. How come you knew I was selling the underwear, you son of a bitch? Your grandfather was a failure in this country. Why? Your Uncle Benji, with all his money, is nothing, too. Of your father, I won't even speak. A man without land is nobody. Remember that, Udo. Zeta. If I got some land, you know, lots of land, 
Would I be a somebody then? I know, I see the car. What's your name? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> your book, huh? <laughs> Hot stuff, really. The real McCoy. Listen, you ever read Gods of the Laker? Huh? Horniest book I ever read. Hot stuff. This volume is reserved for members of the medical profession. <laughs> Come on. You a doctor? I'm Erwin Schubert. How are you? That's Joe Pinsky. Hi. How you doing? That's Donald Levitt. Hi. Hi. And that is Bernie Altman. Hello. Hi, Bernie. Haven't seen you on campus. You must be Kravitz then, eh? Hey, that's right. Hey, how'd you know that? You go to Fletcher's Field High, don't you? Well, I graduated. Uh, so, you're, you're at McGill. All of us. We're only here for the season. I don't know what got into Reuben, putting a regular waiter in with us. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not a regular waiter. See, uh, my father is in the uh, transport business, Mike, and uh, I'm up here, uh, I'm making a study of the uh, hotel business, Mike. Possibly you might also make a study of English grammar. Like, yours is abominable. Oh, my God. Come on. 
Patty. Patty, I'm going to have you cut out that corn. No, Patty, come on. Let's see. No, Patty, 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 Patty,
But take care, child. Most of them have gonorrhea. <laughs> God's little acre. Do you want to know if I go the limit? Don't you think Jewish girls do that? Hey, come on. I've been around, you know? They love it. Just as much as Shix's. Maybe even more. everything. Three hundred dollars is a lot of money. That's all my tips. I thought you were a gambler. It's not that I'm a gambler. I need a steak. I got a lot of ideas. I'm a real comer, you know? The only trouble is, there been a lot of comers before me. I mean, Tony Home Permanent's already been invented. Oh, damn it. Some other guy already thought of Kleenex. Listen, listen. The man who invented the supermarket. He must have been just some schnook of a corner grocer once, right? I mean, even the boy wonder. You know the boy wonder just sold streetcar transfers once? He and my old man are just like this. Did you know that? Well? I'll risk it. Zero! Ha ha! No winners! Woo! Okay, having fun, huh? All right, here we go. All right. No winner, no winner. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Betting is up to you. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Contribute to the fun. All right, that's it, that's it, that's it. All right, that's it. No more bets, no more bets. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Come on. Daddy, black six. Uh, uh, <laughs> no winners. Zero winners. Zero. We have a winner. All right, we have a winner. You can have a little chip. I give you a little chip, and I take all the rest of the chips. <laughs> okay, okay. Here's an eight. Here's my lucky number. Here's my lucky number. Here's my lucky number. Hey, get off my lucky number. Here. Eighteen red. Winners at all. All right, listen, listen, listen. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Um, uh, I know you've all been losing a lot, so uh, I'm no cheapskate. I'm no chiseler. So this is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to raise the betting limit to a dollar. From now on, you can bet a dollar on any number you want. All right? Place your bets. Place your bets. Number seven's your number. Okay, I'll bet twenty. There we go. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Okay, suckers, come on, come on. All right, that's it, that's it. No more bets. Here we go. 25, 25. We have a winner. We finally have a winner. Who is it? Who is it? Uh, Irwin. Er, uh, Herbert. Irvin. Uh, Harold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gotcha. In the corner. Okay, we have a winner. You get paid off 35 little chips out of my millions, millions of chips that I have. Come on now. 32. 15. 15. We got a winner. Who's the winner? It's me again. 32, 32, let's go. 12, 12, right? Okay, okay, uh, place your bets, place your bets. Erwin, what do you like this time? All right. 18 again. Come on, come on. There we go. Go with the winner. All right, all right, all right. No more bets, no more bets. Wait, wait a minute, Judy, wait a minute. No more bets, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Hey, the dealer is getting nervous. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 18. Wheel, I found out. You bastard. Come on. Eighteen. Uh, 
that's it. That's it. I'm all cleaned out. Cuckoo, you better take care of this. It's so nice to see you lie still for once. What? You're always jumping and moving and running and scratching. Give him the $300 right now, please. Don't worry, nobody's gonna know anything about this study. They thought you might be too proud to take the money. Isn't that amusing? Cheaters never prosper, you know. Well, I hope this will uh, hope this will teach you and Lynn a good lesson. Hope you both profit from it in the future. Uh, uh, uh. Before you get it, one promise. No more roulette. Right. But you don't understand. No everything. buts. Give him the money. I'll give him the money. Yeah. From all the guests together. Listen, maybe I gave a little more than eleven, but who's counting, huh? I mean, twenty dollars is the same as five. It's the spirit that counts. <laughs> Where's the lake? It's over there. Where? Right there. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Bitch. Yvette, have you ever been here before with anyone else? 
Answer me. <laughs> You're jealous. Just answer the question. Have you been here before with anyone like, uh, from the hotel? No. Have you been here with anyone? Of course, many times. Oh, God damn it. You don't understand. I don't come here with men. We used to come here to swim when I was little. Oh. What's wrong, Diddy? How far is it to the road? About half a mile. Hey, are you angry with me? Yvette. Yvette, you can't tell anyone that we came here today, okay? If you promise me that, I'll give you $50. Will you going? Yvette, what's wrong? I don't like you anymore, and I don't want your stinking money. Oh, Yvette, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm very excited, that's all. You don't understand. Do you trust me? Yes. Okay. Okay. I want to buy this lake. You're not laughing. No. Zanagath is getting crowded, right? People are going to want new places. All this land is going to be mine. Over there, there's going to be a hotel, a children's camp, everything. Right over there. Right over there, I'm going to build a farm for my grandfather. A man without land. A man without land is nobody. But we have to be very careful of that. If anybody else sees this land, they're going to get the same idea. So we can't tell anybody about it. I won't. Hey, the farmers, they will not want to sell to you because you're a Jew. Hey, watch it. Watch it, eh? You understand? But you are a Jew, no? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Of course I am. Hey, you can help me. Me? I can put up the money, you can buy the land. <laughs> I'll cut you in for the profits. Oh, Jesus, what do I do now? Yvette! Yvette, God damn it! What do I do? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Mo, uh, smoke me, please. Smoke me, sir. So, so why didn't you write me any letters? Well, you know me. I'm not much for letters. Oh, when Lenny worked as a camp counselor, you wrote to him every week. Well, that's different. He's a sensitive type. His nerves are shot, you know. He's been studying too hard. Uncle Benji's going to send him to Cape Cod for a couple of weeks. Well, yeah, that's nice. How's the Zeta? Oh, same. Still trying to make things grow in that backyard. <laughs> you ask about me? You sure did. The old man's crazy about you. I wonder what the hell he sees in you, huh? Hey, Jim. <laughs> Jen. Oh, yeah. Oh, you caught him good, oh, too. Right, Look at right. that. Count, huh? yeah, 10, 20, 38. Yeah. 48. 48. Yeah, man. Hey, hey, hey Lenny. How are you what are you doing, man? The athlete. <laughs> Where are you going? Sir? Uh, tennis. Listen, listen. Tennis? Goody. <laughs> Goody, I forgot I got some money from Uncle Benji yesterday. Can you lend me ten bucks yeah, until tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, no problem, no I problem. I meant to get you a present, you know? Yeah, but, uh, sure. Yeah, I didn't have time, so... How's thirty bucks? Thanks, Goody. You're welcome. Shirt. Oh, come on. Don't hire me a shirt. I'm not going to go with the shirt I had on yesterday. What's better than the shirt you had on yesterday? Look, look at this goddamn laundry. It's been tampering. Lenny's playing tennis. Lenny. <laughs> hanging out with a whole new crowd now. None of them are Jewish and they drink too much. Yeah, they're all college kids, though, and they come from good families, so what the hell? Listen, Dad. Uh, I want you to I want you to take me to the boy wonder. 
Come on, you always promised you'd take me to him. When you're ready. Remember, I always say when you're ready. Okay, well, I'm ready now, Daddy. I have this deal I want to talk the to him deal. about. Deal? What do you think, the boy wonder waits for, for pictures of 19 for deals? Okay. You don't want to do it? I'll do it myself. Then embarrass me? Why are you always afraid that I'm going to embarrass you? Don't shout at me. When I lose my temper, uh, I lose my temper. I, I got you some sports shirts up in Santa Gath. It's, it's a gift, like. Give them to me tonight. Sure thing. You don't have to buy me presents. I wanted to, but anyway. I found some land. <laughs> Lie to an old man. No, <laughs> I'm serious, Zeta. It's a whole lake. It's fantastic. And and the greenest field is going to be reserved for you. And I'm, I'm going to night school, Zeta, at the university, studying business administration. Good. Very good. Well, if there are no more questions, it only remains to me to thank our guest, the distinguished and internationally known film director, Peter John Fryer, for his illuminating, illuminating, illuminating lecture on Italian neorealism, what next? Really, it was really educational. It was jolly decent of you to say so. <coughs> Hope you like it here. <coughs> Montreal is the world's largest inland seaport. <coughs> the burgeoning film center, too. That's why I'm here, old boy, at the invitation of your national film board. They're mad keen that I should work for them. Oh, really? Yes, and they saw a modest little documentary I made for an oil company. Played the Edinburgh Festival. It won an award later in Venezuela. Very prestigious, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Wait up! Gee. You're really embarrassed now. Well, there's such a big time operator like you with my plans. And... <laughs> yeah. How old are you? I'm going on 20. Well, are you having Falberg with what? Would he 22 when he took over MGM? No kidding. Yeah. Rosie. Yes, sir, Bob. <laughs> no. You wouldn't like it, my plans. Uh, see. They're what you'd call commercial. See, I've always thought that there was a lot of money to be made in, 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 in movies of, uh, of weddings and bar mitzvahs. Yeah. <laughs> what a splendid notion. You really think so? Uh, have you any uh, have you any interested interested clients or uh, well I have two orders in hand yes I do and, and and there's a long list of weddings coming up yes oh oh well I mean I mean I might just be interested you see it just so happens that for years I've been interested in folklore and tribal customs uh pardon me well the record of a wedding or a bar mitzvah needn't necessarily be crassly commercial we could concentrate on the symbolism inherent in the ceremony 
Well, it would have to be in color. That's a very, very big selling point. Yes, there is just one point I always make to every producer before I start. I demand a completely free hand. I will tolerate absolutely no interference with my artistic integrity. Uh-huh. Well, I don't know a camera lens from a horse's ass, <laughs> so you can stop worrying. Uh, but there is one thing, sir. I think the important thing about this kind of film is not the symbolism, but to uh, work in as many relatives and friends as humanly possible. That's exactly what I mean! Wait a minute. You wait a minute, Buster. It's not my fat, actually. Long to Gilchrist. He was my slave at Eton. Proper little bastard. <laughs> No, no, I mean, I should have followed my brother into the foreign office. I mean, Eden and Cambridge, no good to me in Hollywood. Couldn't speak Yiddish. Uh, oh, yeah, excuse me. Okay, just uh, sign the contract. Right here. Yeah. All right, it's no use. Kravitz, I can't do this to you. I... I'm a card holder. A communist. And I fled the United States one jump ahead of the FBI. I'm on the blacklist. No kidding. Well, I must be, wasn't I? Well, so what? Well, don't you see, Kravitz? If you employ me, it's likely you'll never be able to work in Hollywood either. Oh. <laughs> We're partners, Mr. Fryer. Huh? Just sign. Oh. It's very wise of you. The wife of Bruce, she died. <laughs> May she rest in peace. So what? So he's going to live in Nova Scotia with his son. Great! And I offered the notary $40 an acre, half cash. Uh, $3,200 and down. And fifty on deposit, I put. <sighs> How long do we have to make the rest of the uh, down payment? Three weeks. Oh. Don't you have the money today? You wrote to me you had $3,000 in the bank. You mustn't lie to me, Duddy. Lie to you? <laughs> Yvette, when my father is sleeping, I'm driving his cab, right? I'm also selling soap and toilet equipment to factories, but with the movie equipment in the office, I got maybe $600 left. And I happen to have a, a, a scotch limp prick of a Presbyterian in some shiny suit for a bank manager. I'm sorry. All right, don't worry. Don't worry. We got three weeks. We'll get the rest of the money. Even if I have to kill somebody for it. <laughs> hey, give me your hand. <laughs> oh, do I got a bone on. <laughs> Get a torch on this, huh? Okay, fuzzy, huh? All the productions are going to be in color, a lasting record like for your grandchildren, their grandchildren, Dirty, and their family. Listen, listen, it's okay for Corn. His daughter's marrying into the Gordons, and he could afford it, okay? Oh, oh, so I bet you think it'd cost him maybe $3,000 to make a movie like this, huh? Are you crazy? <laughs> you see? But it wouldn't cost you that much. For you, I make a top notch movie for you, $2,000. The boy's crazy. And don't tell Cohen I made you this deal, eh? John, John, how many times I gotta tell you? Don't mix the steel with the aluminum. No mix a par, comprene. Boy, I should call me. Look, Dirty, when I go to a movie, I put down 90 cents, and I go in loads, all right? Now, look, my Bernie's a fine kid, but Gary Cooper is not. Excuse me, I'm busy. All right, no hard feelings. I just thought that uh, since your Bernie was uh, such good friends with the Seagull Boy, and since we're doing that bar mitzvah in December... Uh... Uh, duty, duty, I happen to know you're not making a picture for Seagull. Okay? Yes, Are you calling me a liar? I can't believe it! Uh, duty, I can't believe it! I'm standing here... Duty, will you stop jumping that? around? Well, you're some kid. 
Look, for starters, tell me, how do I know that a kid like you, who's still wet behind wet, hell, you're soaking behind the ears, how do I know you know how to make a movie? Mr. Fryer's a very experienced director. Yeah, yeah, he's a regular Louis B. Mayer, so if he's so terrific, tell me, how come he's making bar mitzvah pictures with a boy? So, um, got a lot of money invested? It's a great idea. It's gonna work. We'll see, we'll see. Now tell me, tell me straight, how much is it really gonna cost? About 900 to 1,000 dollars. Lies. You lie through your ears? Well, let's say your cost is six hundred dollars. All right, so I'll tell you what: you make the picture from Bernie's bar mitzvah, and if I like it, I'll give you a thousand dollars. If not, so you'll burn it. I can give you a black and white print for twelve hundred dollars. Let it be twelve hundred dollars, but color, and only if I like it. You're such a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Goody, you're going to see Seal now. Yeah. i tell you what you do. You'll tell him you're making the picture for me, and I'm giving you $2,000. Let him call me, but don't trust him. He's not like me. Get $500 cash and the rest in writing, huh? Hmm. You're such a liar. <laughs> Mama. <Mowler. laughs> I say, old boy, when is the bar mitzvah, actually? Huh? It's two weeks from seven. something unusual in the first frame. Listen, listen. I think the main thing is to get a lot of shots of old man Farber. Yes. You see, I see a slow dissolve into the lad's racial memory. Perhaps we should start with the pain of the baby's circumcision. You can't put a kid's pecker in the picture. There are going to be women and children there. Shh. Remember, no artistic interference. Right now, I see myself waiting on tables again. Bye. How long do we have? About 10 days. Oh, Jesus. Look, I don't need you here. As a secretary, like. What makes you think that I'm going to stay in Montreal? You'll stay, you'll stay. But, Diddy, what about the money? I'll get the money, now just... Will you lay off, please? Hey. You want to do it on the floor? You won't get any splinters. Honest. What do you say? <laughs> the eastern townships. It will be generally cooler in all areas. There will be variable cloudiness clearing this evening with light winds. Hey, Dad. You ever think about getting married again? What? Well, I thought I thought you were lonely, like. No one will ever replace your mother for me. Don't you ever forget that. Well, I don't remember very well, you know. I was only six when she. Well, you missed out on plenty, brother. Plenty. Dora was some wife. Did she like me? Sure. Why not? Hey, I almost forgot. The boy one will see you tomorrow at eleven thirty. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. Hey, this means you you think I'm I'm ready now, doesn't it, Dad? Don't embarrass me. That's I'm not gonna idea. embarrass you. Now, the one who's doing this is a special favor you're, for me. You're gonna be very proud of me. Just watch. I'll watch. <laughs> <coughs> hey, kid. What's your name? Kravitz. Kravitz, Kravitz. Yeah. Well, you've made it, kid. We're gonna start you right here as a buzzboy. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. There must be some uh, mistake. Isn't Mr. Dingleman gonna see me? Look, he's a very busy man. I'll try my best, Jerry. That's all I can do. Hey! Mr. 
Mrs. Ingerman. I'm Max's boy, Diddy Kravitz. There must be some mistake. I'm sorry, Mrs. Ingerman. I'm Ingram. no schnook. I don't need your help to get a job as a lousy busboy, you know? Are you in a habit of barging into people's places like this, Sonny? My father said we had an appointment. I'd like you to look at these, please, sir. I think we could really help one another. Some other time, Sonny. Well, Sonny yourself, you big tough. Hey, 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 God, hey, Sonny, God damn it! You lousy liar! Afraid he was going to embarrass you, eh? Go, uh, that intimate of the boy uh, wonder uh, shit! He doesn't know you from a hole in the ground. Please, not here. All those stories ever since I was a kid. How could you do this to me? Do what? Yes, but to get you an appointment, I got you one, right? I mean, what do you think? Any schnook can walk off the street and see the wonder just like that? <laughs> Max, Max Kravitz, how are you? Mr. Dingleman. Hasn't changed much, has it, Mo? <laughs> Hello, Duddy. Mo, get it. Mo, Mo, quick, get it. You want a root beer? <laughs> no, no, thanks. Some coffee. Oh, no, no, stop no. begging him, will you? Yeah. You shut up. The I'm your father, and you shut up. Mr. Dingleman and I are all friends. Isn't that right, Mr. Dingleman? Yeah, sure, you bet. Yeah. Look, Duddy, this is a hell of an idea. I want to talk to you about it. You don't say. Be polite. Now talk nice. Now look, I've got to go to New York. I'll get you a ticket. We'll talk about it on the train. What? You heard what the man said. <laughs> I won't sit with you on the train, Duddy. As a matter of fact, from the time we leave this place till we get to New York, you don't owe me. You understand? I don't you please. Good. Number no. 220. Here's five hundred and fifty dollars. Fifties for expenses. Five hundred. Now we'll call that a loan. Now all you have to do is take this bag with you to New York. Understand? Sure you do. And New York. Tortuous. Inflicting pain must be. My name's Virgil. Montreal? Yeah. I'm from Plattsburgh. You going to New York? Yeah. Business. I'm an indie. What? Uh, an independent motion picture producer. Oh, yeah. We're the biggest in Canada. Here, I'll show you my card. Really? That's wonderful. It really is. I've always wanted to be in the movie industry myself. Oh, well, I'm always looking for new investors. Uh, oh, too late. I invested everything I had in pinball machines. Mm. Ten of them, $350 a piece. Next thing I know, they get banned. Now they're sitting in a warehouse. Can you get them into Canada? Well, what would a movie producer want in pinball machines? Well, uh, I like helping people. I just might be interested. Really? Yeah. Take her. Yes, Bird. Have you got anything to declare? No. No, sir. No, sir. I swear I get off. Nice meeting you. Hey. You deliver them to me in Montreal, I'll give you $150 for them, each.
of the Nile, not so cruel as the circumcision rite of the Zulus, and even more intricate than a snowflake is the Bar Mitzvah. generation to generation, for years before the birth of Christ. The rule of law has been passed from hand to hand among the chosen people, something priceless, something cherished. Like chinchilla. Listen, one more crack on you, Arnie, and out you go. This is a story of one Hebrew babe, and how at the age of 13 he was at last accepted as an adult member of his tribe. This is the story of the Bar Mitzvah of Bernard, son of Moses. Lock the doors, here comes the dirty part. And through the centuries, the eight-day-old Hebrew babe has been welcomed into the race with blood. That afternoon in the good rabbi's study, he's told something of the tragic history of his race. How reactionary dictators from Nero to Hitler persecuted them in order to divert the working classes from the true cause of their sorrows. A most edifying experience. 
A work of art. Yeah. Mark. Dear Dad, I'll get in touch with you as soon as I can, but I'm not going back to medical school. I'm sorry, please forgive me, Lenny. Jesus. You think he would have gotten in touch with me, whatever it was? Well, I'm the father! Are we gonna have I... another family quarrel now? <laughs> I haven't seen you in a long time. You've changed. You haven't. This is for himself now. An operator. I heard. You wait, he'll burn his fingers. Uh, has anybody tried to call his friends or to find Nobody out? Nobody knows from nothing. Okay, okay. <laughs> Why don't you both go to bed, huh? I'll look for him in the morning. Don't worry, I'll find him. Look who's in charge. <laughs> you know, it's easy for you to talk. Maybe I never had a lot of money to give him, but he's my son. And he could be lying dead in a ditch right now. I never tried to take him away from you, Max. I was only trying to help. I got feelings. You'd be surprised. He's impotent. That's the Zeta, he told me. What? Your Uncle Benji. Yeah, for all his loot, he can't have kids of his own. <laughs> now you know why he and I have lived in Florida all these years, huh? I'm not going home. I'm finished at medical school. I'm gonna get a job. Oh, yeah? Tell Daddy I'm okay. And if Uncle Benji doesn't like it, he can go to hell. Oh, sure, sure. I'll take care of it. I'll just tell Uncle Benji that all that money you've taken from him over the years, that's just to prove how much you hate him. Of course, uh, Daddy is something else. I'll just tell him that he doesn't have to pimp anymore so that he can buy you gifts like Uncle Benji. So tell me, why can't you go back to school? Given my word, I'm sworn to silence. <laughs> well, what are you, a gentleman? You think just because I wasn't born in Westmount, I can't be a gentleman? Uh huh. What well, do you think? Just because some of our people made buckets in the black market during the war, I still can't I get be it, a gentleman. I get it. I get it. I get it. You're an anti-Semite, eh? Okay, I'm an anti-Semite. I prefer the company of Gentiles. Mm hmm You don't mind me standing here, I hope. I mean, you're not afraid of getting contaminated or anything? No. Good, good, because I have a message for you. Sandra says not to worry. Her father doesn't know, and her doctor isn't going to tell him. You went there? What is it her father doesn't know, Len? Can't say. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I forgot you're a gentleman. Lay off, please. You're a chicken. That's what you are. You want me to tell you what you did? You performed an abortion on the girl. What is the matter with you, Leonard? You are 22 years old. Don't you know better than to go bareback? I know you don't like him, but Erwin Schubert's one of the brightest people I know. Ah. He took me to this party where I met Sandra Calder and Andy Simpson. Andy's father is J.P. Simpson. The J.P. Simpson. Mmm, may his balls float in sulfuric acid. Sandra liked me. No one in the crowd cared that I was Jewish. I told them, you know, I wasn't trying to hide it. How could you with your pants down? Thanks. Anyway. Andy was in bad shape. It worried me, so I asked Irwin what was wrong. He told me. He explained how I could help. So it wasn't even you that knocked her up? <laughs> Gentlemen, eh? Shit. You know what you are? 
You are the number one sucker of all time. You would look at things like that. You've no code of honor, duty. What's in it for me? That's your philosophy. Oh, I knew you'd never understand. <laughs> Kachkala, uh, cutie. Me and Frank Buck, we bring him back alive. <laughs> he's okay, he's okay. He's just been uh, studying too hard. Well, Lenny. <laughs> Caller, uh, this is about Sandra. She doesn't have any cold. She's been knocked up. Sorry, sweetheart. Are you the abortionist or the blackmailer? Me? <laughs> Are you crazy? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm a respectable businessman. Motion pictures. Don't you think he should have waited until he got his degree before he started performing illegal operations? Okay, okay. But why should my brother be the fall guy? Why should your daughter and Andy Simpson get off and my brother I think they should all be thrown off campus. Wow. Your own daughter, eh? I'm only trying to be fair. Oh. Oh, sure. Sure you are. Sandra gets expelled and she comes home to this uh, Yankee stadium here. And Andy Simpson goes home and sits on his ass until his father croaks and then he inherits enough money to choke ten horses. And what happens to my brother? He becomes a cab driver. I'm sorry. He's sorry. Jesus. No disrespect, man. Look, Lenny is not even the one that knocked her up. He never once touched her. Is that how you people pay off favors? Why didn't your brother come here to see me himself? Well, I, I, he's a very sensitive type. He gets headaches. I don't know. It, Tell me, how does a boy like you get into films? I'm interested. Oh, a little more in the corner. We're at it. That's game all. If I sink this, it'll be three straight games credits. Great shot! Well, you can tell Lenny he's lucky to have a brother like you. <laughs> uh, well, you'd be surprised some of the things I've done in my time, Mr. Collar. I wouldn't. Listen, I would, I would really like to show you my appreciation. I'd like to, uh, I'd like to send you a gift. I can get my hands on <laughs> some really good linen. That won't be necessary, Kravitz. Oh, well. <laughs> Look, why don't you come and see me again? Phone me. We can play snooker together. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. I <laughs> can do. Of course, uh, I can't play you for money, Mr. Calder. You're way out of my league. <laughs> I see what you mean. <laughs> okay, I'm here. What's the deal? This cat is ready to sell. The, the sister in the asylum died. Hi. How much down? He wants fifty dollars an acre, twenty-five hundred down. Uh, okay. Uh, try to knock it down to sixty-five hundred, and tell him that uh, we'll give him the whole works in cash if he'll take sixty. Do you have the twenty-five hundred? It's an old school, sir. Oh, excuse me. Uncle Kravitz, come for your pound of flesh. I am surprised at you, Mr. Fryer. Don't you remember we have a bar mitzvah tomorrow? Yes, I never held up a reduction in my life. Apologize. Why don't we just go, huh? Excuse me. I sell my soul to the Hebrew. Shame on me. Listen, shame listen, on me. listen to me, you Venezuelan prize winner of a horse's ass. What? I want you to make me some of those funny montages, okay? Anything. Just be in shape for that film you tomorrow, you hear me? What? If I was Eisenstein, he wouldn't talk to me like that. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Did you pay the rent? With my own salary. I'll pay you back, I swear to God. And the phone? Yeah. Then answer the fucking door, please. Ah. Hey, long time no see. Yeah. Everything's okay. Get them over the border was breeze. It was, huh? Yeah. 
and unhappy to see me. Sure I am. We've just come into the pinball business in Santa Gat. Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> In the breast pocket of this jacket, uh, there are some pills that my that my brother Lenny gave me. Give me a couple. No, in the breast pocket. You won't be happy until you kill yourself. Look, just give me the pills. Fantastic machine, eh? Now, you know how long I can get for receiving stolen goods. Oh, come on. I own this machine. I got a receipt here, everything. What do you think? Now, listen, I brought Mr. Roseboro all the way up from New York because I want him to service and install them for you. He's an expert. That's a falsehood. <laughs> Mr. Roseboro, you want to wait outside, please? Huh? Some kid I got here, huh? Got it from a popping now, a shake shit to go with. I hope you get the clock. <laughs> That'll teach you a lesson. Hey, I gotta have an account here, Mo. What do you say, huh? Mark it down? The day hasn't come yet, kid, when you get credit here. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't tip him. Virgil? Virgil, how'd you like to stay here and go to work for me? Hey, Titi, that's wonderful. You mean you'd give a guy like me a job, knowing... Well, you know. Well, you know, I started that film distribution thing up in Santa Gaff. I'm gonna need a guy I can trust who can uh, take the film around all the hotels and run the whole show. Mr. Kravitz, you'll never regret this. I'll work so hard for you. Just one thing, Virgil, I need a guy with a truck. With you two. Look, I owe you a thousand dollars, right? Right. Did he? What would you say if for that thousand dollars I could lay my hands on just the right truck for you? Could you, Mr. Kravitz? <laughs> Frauds. I can pay you sixty dollars a week. I gotta keep the truck in the company name, though. It'd be a genuine honor, Mr. Kravitz. Job. Yeah, but what happens if he has a fit while he's driving the truck? He pulls over to the curb. That's what happens. Pulls over to the curb. Listen, Dirty, I know that the truck is not costing you more than $600. Oh, shush. I know it. I want, I want you to give Rachel the rest of the money back. Oh, come on. I warn you, if you don't do that, I'm going back to Santa Gat. I'm going back to Santa Gat. Hey! <laughs> I know what I got, so we won't pretend. Foolish talk, I don't need. I've got lots of money. I know. If you'll give up those vulgar movies you're making and take over the factory, you can have 50%. The rest is for my wife. Why do you hate me so much? <laughs> you think it's funny? Everything about me is funny. I'm a regular laughing stock. <laughs> you know, as a kid, whenever you came to the house, you always had a surprise for Lenny. I could have been born dead for all you cared. It was always the Zeta to bring you surprises. He would never hear a bad word said against you. Why did you try? Mm, such words. But do they what will become of you? Well, I won't become a doctor, that's for sure. Now, why did you say that? Because Lenny never wanted to become a doctor. You forced him. I did my best for that boy. If I left it to your father to bring him up, he would be driving a taxi today. I don't like the way you talk about my father. Excuse me, my brother Max. He's not so very bright. No, you're the bright one, that's right. I forgot. Congratulations. Why didn't you ever have time for me? Because you're a born pusher, a little Jew boy on the make, and guys like you make me feel sick and ashamed. Oh, 
you lousy, intelligent people. You liars. And your, your books and your, your socialism and your sneers, you give me one long pain in the ass, you know that? You think I never read a book? I've read books, big deal. They always make fun of guys like me. Push your ears, guys, I want to get somewhere. If you're so concerned, how come in real life you never ever had time for me, eh? You think I should be running after something else besides money? Good, you tell me what, you bastard! <laughs> I'm gonna have a place of my own one day. And when I do, there aren't gonna be any superior shits to laugh at me or run me off. Such a nervy kid. My God, Doodle, take my advice. I don't want your advice. You don't want anything from me, eh? <laughs> Come to think of it, you're the only one in the family who never came here to ask for something. <laughs> there were plenty of times when I needed help. But I wasn't gonna come. Not to you. You're hurting me, you know that. Sorry. <laughs> the doctor. You come another time? Sure. I wish I'd made more time for you, Doodle. God help me, but I wish I'd seen what your grandfather saw. You don't let him die. That's my uncle. I want six sesame, very hot from up there, please. Thank you. Bitch. You know what I'm gonna do, Virgil? I'm gonna fire her. But how are you gonna fire her? I mean, she quit over two weeks ago. How much is this? Ten cents, please. What is that? You wanna tell me what that book is, please? That's a, that's a rhyming dictionary, Mr. Kravitz. I'm a poet. He's a poet. Everybody's a poet. <laughs> How's the vet? <laughs> Come on. You know you see her every night. Listen, tell her that I drink a lot. I look terrible, okay? Tell her that my Uncle Benji is dying of cancer, okay? Okay, Mr. Kravitz. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Dubrovsky made a mistake about the amount of money for the truck. It was only $750. So here's a check for $250. That's for you. Gee, thanks, Mr. Kravitz. And I'm raising your salary to $75 a week. You tell her that, okay? Sure thing, Keep Mr. Kravitz. Down, right back keep it down, there. Kiss this, will you? Jesus Christ. <laughs> We're going to Santa Gath this afternoon. I got the money for two more lots. I own nearly half of it now. Only nine months it took me. Huh? What do you think of your dirty Kravitz now? Ah. Prepare yourself for a shock. What is it? What happened? Fryer has just gone off for good. So what? Big deal. He has taken the camera this time. Oh, so what? We're insured. Oh, geez, we got the Hershorn wedding in two weeks, don't we? Hmm. He told me that he left because uh, he was in love with me and uh, he wanted to marry me. Are you kidding? He was my friend. I liked him. And what has that got to do with it? Are you crazy? <laughs> he wasn't in love with you. <laughs> No. Listen, I wouldn't be surprised if I did get married one of these days. Hey, look. It floats. <laughs> it's cute.
killed. <laughs> Hello. Yes. He says that Virgil will never walk again. His spine was smashed. The nerves are torn, and the spinal fluid is not moving. And he has lost all sense of feeling under the hips. And he will not even be able to control his bowels anymore, and he will not even know when he's urinating. I want you to know all the details. You're not going to get off easy. Would you like to marry me? Are you beginning to worry that all the property deeds are in my name? <laughs> Once the insurance company establishes that he was an epileptic, you won't collect a cent. Furthermore, he could sue you for everything you've got. He's my friend, but... Good. Get him to sign the release, then. I'll draw up a letter for you. You hired me to protect you. That's what I'm doing. But he asks about you every day. He thinks that you are angry at him for smashing up your truck, and that's why you won't go at the hospital. All right, all right. Let's not waste time anymore, Ben. Here's a box of matches. You poke them under my fingernails one at a time and you light them, all right? Go ahead. You can transfer the deed to your father's name until you come of age. You think the business is going to fall apart without you? I never said that. You know what? I'll tell you what. I'm going to get a really good secretary now. Somebody who can spell. Some girl who's really pretty. Yeah, I I'm really going to have a good time now. Uncle Benji was waiting by the window for you, day after day. I came whenever I could, Zeta. I was talking to Doodle. He left this for you. It's for you. Where's Mother's grave? There's only one thing you can do. Declare bankruptcy.
Here it comes, St. Urban's Nine Day Wonder. <laughs> Finish with the cab. There you are, partner. I should see the boy wonder. Maybe he can put something your way. When? Shinora's day. Steam bath. Jordan? Doodle, is that you? Big deal. There's a law about driving a cab. No, but look. Look how you look. Not easy to make a living, Doody. What do you think? I never had troubles. You think you're going to uh, scrap here 25 years next September without accidents, without lawsuits, payoffs under the table, lies? It's either that or you go under. So make up your mind, my friend. You don't build beautiful houses and send your wife to Miami in the winter from driving a taxi. Ah. All right. Listen, duty. One time a guy... A guy got killed on my yard. A broken crane. They said it was my fault. Negligence. I almost went in jail. Yeah. I came this close. But I had a partner. He wasn't as smart as me. So he went instead. But let me tell you something. My Bernie will never have to cheat a partner into jail. But, on the other hand, he never landed in this country with three words of English and 50 cents in his pocket either, so... So there you are. He's crippled for life, my it's friend. It's not your fault, God damn it, Duty. Ah. I never knew you were such a softy. Listen, it's war, Duty. War. And the white man has all the big guns. It was dangerous for him to be driving that truck, and it was my responsibility oh, that he... Oh, you want to be a saint? Well, then go and his real and plant oranges in a kibbutz, my young Kravitz. You know my attitude toward my oldest and dearest customer? <laughs> a plague on him. That's my motto. And the more money I make, the better I can take care of my own. You try it sometime. You talk to the white man when you're in trouble. You'll find out. He'll throw you in the oven along with six million others. Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, come on. Virgil's not a Nazi. Yeah. How are things at the office? Oh, come see, come see. Not that I care, but uh, how is the new girl making out? Can't complain. Shit! Why didn't you bring some flowers? You know, flowers. I don't... It's good to see you again. You're my buddy. Time for dinner, Virgil. Excuse me. Well, I guess I, I better be going, huh? That is need to stay for dinner. If he wants to. You must be very proud of yourself. You really... 
could really work miracles with him. Please. I'm just very proud of you, that's all. Why don't you come out with it and just ask if you can stay? $4,500 and the whole lake is yours. The notary has given us uh, two weeks before he puts up a public for sale. I do I'm not interested. If, if you really mean that, today I'm glad. I'll start it all over again. Please, I couldn't stand it. We don't need it to be rich, you know. And I can do anything you want. Hey, Daddy. Your friend Mr. Dingleman's in trouble. What else? He's being investigated by the Code Commission. What for? Smuggling drugs, heroin. Okay, I'm here. And you know why? Certainly. You heard I was in trouble and you owe me 500? No, no such luck. No, I need $4,500. <laughs> Aren't you afraid a gangster like me might just uh, take you for a ride? <laughs> <laughs> you must think I'm kidding. Don't you know that I could go to the Code Commission? I could test What? You. That you carry the suitcase across the border? <laughs> <laughs> I hope they put you away for life. Yeah, maybe they will. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, I used to think you were some guy. Wait a minute. You know, I am interested in real estate. Now, if you're broke, and there's something you want to part with. Hanging is too good for you, Dingleman. Did he, do you know who's after the land? Who? Dinkelman. All right, uh, what do you mean he's after the land? He's got all the money in the world. Why didn't he just buy it? One of the farmers, he, uh, he, uh, he hates Jews. And, uh, and he would like much more to sell to me. Another anti-Semite? God Shh, bless him! Listen, listen, I want you to tell that dumb pea soup farmer that Dinkelman is the biggest, fattest, dirtiest goddamn Jew that ever lived. And if he ever gets his hands on that land, he's going to put a synagogue on it. <laughs> it's a whole lake, Daddy! A whole bloody lake! Ah, your last brainwave ended in bankruptcy. Listen, it'll be owned by all of us, don't you see? 
We're all gonna be rich. You're gonna be able to retire. What's under the lake? Oil? Hey. Oh, shit. <laughs> Talk to him, Doody. Don't get impatient. He's not gonna help me. In a million years, the man is not gonna help me. Did you have a boy who talked to his father like that? Strike. Now look, put it this way, Daddy. Dingleman, okay? Dingleman is fighting me for this land. You're competing with the boy Wonder? Yeah, right. okay, now you get the picture? Oh, I smell burning fingers! Oh, yeah, well, maybe his, not mine. Come on, Daddy! Oh, look, man, I, I worked hard for my money. I got my own age to think of. He's never asked her for anything before, Daddy. What is this? Look, they're ganging up on me. Oh, jeez! Oh, jeez! If I don't lend you the money, suddenly I'm a son of a bitch. Me, who sat up here for three nights when you had the mumps. At great personal risk, because, you know, I never had them. <laughs> I missed out on the Lux Radio Theater. And the last game of the World Series. You know who was pitching? Ruffy. Ruffy? Oh. Ruffy. Yeah, Ruffy. Listen, some fathers wouldn't even go around the... If not for duty, I would have been expelled. I don't give rewards for that. We're family. We stick together, like the Rockefellers, in our own small way. Jesus H. Christ! If I was John D. Rockefeller, would he talk to me like that? He's nervous, Daddy. This is driving me crazy. I am going for a walk. Wait a minute. Just wait a minute, Judy. Daddy. Daddy, how much money can you give him? Give him? I give him nothing. I'll lend him. I'll lend him, uh, a thousand dollars. You're kidding me. And I got a feeling I'm kissing her goodbye, too. There, there it goes. You see it? Right in the gutter. Right in the goddamn gutter. <laughs> oh, no. Now he loves me, huh? Now he loves me. <laughs> Boy, I wish I had some of your talent, Virgil. <laughs> Do you want to read Thad's my latest poem? Could I? Yeah. Thank you. That's really nice. Hey, by the way, where did you and, and Yvette uh, get all the money for the, the hospital bills, you know? Virgil? Oh, come on. I thought we were buddies. Well, my grandfather left me some. Your grandfather? You want to know what you ought to do with some of that money, Virgil? You ought to invest it in real estate. I can't lend you any money, Daddy. Virgil, it's a very good... I advice. promised to vet, and I, I can't. You promised to vet, huh? That lousy, pork-eating Florence Nightingale, where is she? I'm disappointed. I never thought you'd ask me for, uh, money. No, I guess not. I mean, I was supposed to play snooker with you for about 18 years. Well, I don't have the time, Hugh. Or the background, or the polish. But you know what, Hugh? If I hustle, if I really, really hustle, my son is gonna have it all. I mean, how long did it take your family to go from the slums of Glasgow to all of this? I bet his fingernails aren't as clean as yours, Hugh. So up yours, and thanks for the booze. Hi. Diddy, what's going on? I've sold Where's... the books and some of the furniture. What? Oh, listen, my little Kachka, I am not a British lord, and this is not my ancestral home, and if my precious uncle had set things up so that I could take a mortgage on this yeah, place, but... I wouldn't be in a spot like this. It's all in trust. Isn't there anyone Honestly, else Honestly, we... Diddy, I, I don't get a penny until I graduate. No, that's it, I'm finished.
Operator, uh, I'd like to number to the Bank of Montreal. Uh, uh, that's all right, Operator. I have it. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, this is Virgil Roseboro. Uh, I'd like to get a, a check certified. And, uh, are you aware of my condition? Yes, that's right. Um, well, I'd like to send Mr. Kravitz down for, uh, for certification. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Hello? Yes, this is Mr. Roseboro. Mr. Kravitz just left. All right, thank you very much. Bye. wilderness and you remember it you goddamn remember it because there's gonna be a whole town going up around here hey pop huh kravitzville kravitzville <laughs> <laughs> kravitzville dream when you're feeling oh, poor God. <laughs> dream who's that on our land jerry jerry hey aren't you in jail yet Jerry, I want you to meet my boy Lenny. Now Lenny's gonna be a doctor. That's great, kid. Hello, Duddy. Hey, I came here to congratulate you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is a fine property your boy oh, has yeah. here, Max. Yeah, yeah. Now listen, kid. You're gonna need a lot of money to develop this land. Yeah, 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 a million, maybe more. Hey, Zeta, where are you going? Zeta? I don't feel well. I'm gonna sit in the car. But you haven't picked out your farm yet, Zeta. Listen to me, Duddy. Duddy, listen! All right, he's listening. You can't raise the money for development. I can. <laughs> That's funny. Last time I spoke to you, you couldn't raise $4,000. Remember, Sonny? We could be partners. Uh, uh, now, just think, huh? My boy and Jerry Dingleman, partners, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dingleman, come over here. Uh, come here. Come here. Dingleman, get off my land. <laughs> no. <laughs> Beat it. <laughs> Beat it. <laughs> All right, kid. Just remember, you'll never do it alone. Hey, Dingleman. <laughs> I'm gonna give you five minutes to get the hell off my land. <laughs> I'm king of the castle around here, hey, Dingleman. Jerry, you gotta make it. Kid. Come on. He don't know what he's doing. Hey, remember how you were when you were a kid, huh? Hey! Uh -huh. Hey, wait a second! Oh, wait a second! Six, wait seven, a second! Seven. Hey, Dingleman! Dingleman! On my land, Dingleman, there ain't gonna be any dope smugglers, and there ain't gonna be any cripples! Except on Snorra's day, Dingleman! <laughs> hey! Hey, Pop, don't you see? Don't you see? This is a gold mine! Lenny, he came all this way just to beg for an inn! Hey! Hey, Dingleman! Dingleman, run! Faster, you bastard! Come on, run! <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't want a lot here. Why not? The girl came to see me last week. You weren't going to wait until you could hear my side of the story. I can see what you had planned for me, Doodle. You're going to be good to me, and that will settle your conscience when you go out to swindle others. The boy's fits are getting worse. I didn't give him epilepsy. What do you want me to do? You want me to marry Ishiksa? Don't twist. Not with me. You don't twist either. You don't want to farm. You want to die in that stinking sweatshop, don't you? A man without land is nothing. That's what you taught me. Well, I'm a somebody. I'm a real somebody now. I don't want Virgil to see you. If he see you, might have another fit. I ought to wring your goddamn neck. What the hell did you talk to my grandfather for, huh? Of all the people in the world, he's the one person I never wanted to hurt. That's exactly why I went. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Please go. Yvette, I did it for all of us. You really think I liked forging that check? You really think I'm a thief? Look, I had to act quickly. What I did, okay. What I did was, it was unorthodox, but I'm gonna pay him back, I swear to God, I'm gonna pay him back every cent. Don't watch your money. And all I want is to be left alone. Will you listen? I'm building a town, a whole town, where there was only bugs and bullshit before. I'm, I'm creating jobs. I'm a public goddamn benefactor. Diddy, I don't want to see you ever again. everything myself. I can't trust anybody. I suppose we betrayed you. Yes, you did. Yvette! Yvette, God damn it! Will you listen? That'll be a dollar and a quarter. Uh, mark it down. Sure, Duddy. You see that, Daddy? You see that? Listen, even as a kid, long before he begun to make his mark, my boy was a troublemaker. He was born on the wrong side of the tracks with a rusty spoon in his mouth, so to speak, and a spark of rebellion in him. A motherless boy, but one who thrived on adversity. Like uh, Maxim Gorky or Eddie Cantor, if you're familiar with their histories. Now, from the time of his birth, you knew he was slated for fame and fortune. Ah, come on, my duty. But only a St. Urban Street boy, huh? So what? Listen, where did Napoleon come from? Corsica. And who ever heard of that little dry part of an island before the little corporal made his rep? Okay, so listen, Duddy's got a big mouth. And he did bad at school. Well, you know what I say to that? So did Winston Churchill, if you read up on his life story. And he didn't exactly wind up at zero. Now, mind you, he had advantages. He was well born. He wasn't Jewish, and he didn't have to contend with a lot of anti-Semites or an old man who did nothing but drive a taxi. Yeah, so what? Listen, I, I brought my Duddy up right. 
When he was only 13, they didn't know you could do anything but pee with it. I bought him a set of barbells. You know, for weightlifting. Son, I said, the world is full of shits. Exercise. And you know what else?